India's mission to the moon has three primary objectives. First, to demonstrate safe and soft landing on the lunar surface. Second, to demonstrate rover roving on the moon. And third, to conduct in situ scientific experiments. While the first two were achieved with success, making India the first nation in the world to successfully land on the south pole of the moon, its third objective, which is now of interest to the scientific community, is on. On this front, Th Chandrayaan 3 has started delivering data that has been collected by the lander and rover. As per the latest updates, the laser-induced breakdown spectroscope uh, uh, instrument on board the Pragyan rover has unambiguously confirmed the presence of sulfur in the lunar surface near the South Pole. It has also detected the presence of aluminium, sulfur, calcium, iron, chromium, titanium, as well as oxygen. Meanwhile, the hunt for hydrogen is now underway. This comes after the Chandrayaan 3's lander earlier profiled the lunar temperature as well. VN Jha, former Joint Director DRDO, is joining us uh, on the broadcast. Uh, VN Jha, uh, your uh, interpretation of uh, so far what all uh, Chandrayaan 3 has been able to send back uh, regarding the presence of various uh, you know, uh, uh, minerals, materials on the moon. Very good morning, Uday, and to all your viewers. I thank again NewsX for taking up the cause of science to the entire public here in India and watching abroad. Look, all these informations and the data that will be coming in the subsequent days and what we are already seeing, <clears throat> it is going to open uh, a new dimension of the science and scientific research, especially pertaining to the moon that has been eluding us for such a long, long time. We already know earlier the Apollo missions, they have uh, you know done the studies, but that studies, those studies were in and around the equator. So were the USSR, so were the Chinese. But what is happening in the vicinity of the South Pole uh, will be surprising. It will bring surprises. And till now, uh, I'm not surprised to say that what, what is happening is slightly different from what Americans had done. Look, <clears throat> Americans had told us that in and around the equator, they had found mostly the neon, helium, uh, hydrogen, argon, carbon dioxide traces, carbon monoxide traces, methane traces, and water vapor traces. That was in and around the equator. Uh, in the elements, among the elements, uh, they had found most of the 43% of <clears throat> oxygen. That was the maximum find for them. And followed by silica, that was... Uh, Silicon was about 20 percent. Uh, you know, magnesium was about <clears throat> about 19 percent. Uh, iron around 10 percent. Uh, so was calcium 3 percent, aluminium 3 percent, and some trace uh, uh, elements of chromium about 0.4 percent, uh, titanium about 0.2 percent or so. So these were their finding in around the, uh, uh, the equator lunar equator. But what data ISRO uh, 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 rover is giving us is slightly surprising that the concentration of titanium, uh, of, of uh, chromium, aluminium has been more around the, uh, around the south pole that they have been uh, studying. And this particularly uh, laser beam uh, uh, spectroscope uh, is likely to give us more surprises. And uh, as I was looking at the data that the ISRO has released, uh, it is not surprising that elements are similar to what was there. Uh, and, uh, you know, in that data, you might have seen that there are few elements already mentioned, like aluminum, chromium, titanium. This is already mentioned. I only hope that they have got also open-ended research, uh, open-ended data, which is not identifying the material that gives us the property of the laser broken, uh, uh, you know, the composition of those uh, rocks. That may give us even newer uh, possibility of newer elements to be found on the moon. But till now, uh, as someone has mentioned that, that the hydrogen is eluding us, no, hydrogen will come. Hydrogen will come uh, either in some other form, some, uh, you know, the uh, there is also alpha particle spectros spectrometer that will be analyzing the regolith, the dust, the soil of the moon. And in that, <clears throat> we are certain 
to get various composition of even water in the coming days maybe may not be at one place maybe at the other place so all those things will come in the coming days and weeks and months as we continue analyzing those data what is coming out from there okay Suresh Naik, a former ISRO scientist, is also joining us at this point uh, on the broadcast. Uh, Suresh Naik, uh, you know, it's just been a few days since uh, the landing happened and already so much information being sent back uh, about this undiscovered part of the moon. What has stood out for you so far, Suresh Naik? Well, actually, first of all, I would like to say that after the stupendous uh, technological success demonstration through Chandrayaan-3, now the scientific achievements have started coming. Okay, that is a very encouraging thing. And in the, such a short time, uh, I would say, put in one sentence, what new finding these uh, laser-based induced spectrometer has found out so far is finding of sulfur. That is the first uh, discovery, okay, by Chandrayaan-3 uh, rover. And uh, earlier uh, expeditions have already found out some of the other elements as already has been explained. But finding of the sulfur will always remain the finding of Chandrayaan-3 for the first time in the southern portion of the moon. Now, a little bit about how this laser-induced spectrometer works. You see, uh, this has got a very uh, unique type of wave because uh, we have to do it uh, from a distance, right? And this uh, has a uh, only ability, rover can see only 5 meters above itself, the position. Beyond 5 meters, it cannot detect anything. So, actually, uh, this uh, laser spectrometer, uh, you know, throws a beam which is a very high energy laser beam on the pieces of rocks and on the soil portion. And instantly, these are converted into very hot gases, creating very hot plasma. Now, the speciality of this hot plasma is it uh, uh, produces a very uh, strong light and that reflected light on the instrument of spectrometer, the speciality is, is a set of wavelengths which are there in the element are identified. Another uh, particular uh, interest of this particular instrument is analysis very quickly. The results are known very quickly. Okay, that is why we you see within about one day we know uh, with the preliminary analysis that uh, sulfur is available. Okay, now coming to the another interesting finding on the moon, that is also for the first time, without going into what has been already found out, I would concentrate on Vikram's new finding and this uh, rover's new finding. Now Vikram has got an instrument which is called CHEST and that is for measurement of thermophysical nature of the soil around the land. It has got a very interesting uh, feature and that it can penetrate the soil to a depth of 10 centimeter. And what it has found out, and that is also I would emphasize, is a new addition to science by Chandrayaan-3. And that one sees the uh, profile of temperature on and below the surface of the moon varies tremendously. At about 4 cm on the ground, it is about uh, you know, 50 degrees Celsius. Whereas, if you just go 8 cm below the ground, it is other extreme, minus 10 degrees Celsius. So, this is also a very interesting finding of the Chandrayaan-3 mission. And this is a new addition to the science. That is what I want to emphasize. So many things have been found out, but these are new additions are coming out and I'm sure that uh, uh, rover also will soon find out hydrogen element in the soil of the moon. Yes, that's something I think we're going to be uh, waiting and watching out for, isn't it, uh, uh, you know, VN Jha, whether the presence of hydrogen is there or not. Uh, that is something that is keenly awaited by the world scientific community, not just India. 
Absolutely. <clears throat> Look, these are the findings uh, and these are the raw data, mind you. <clears throat> it has not been uh, analyzed and then put up into the public domain. What raw data has come, what the findings of the uh, laser sp spectroscope has come, that is coming up there in the coming days. There are a few more things that we are looking for. See, today is the uh, uh, eighth day of the moon uh, uh, rise there on the, uh, on the uh, lunar surface. This is the time when maximum of the temperature on the surface, you can expect either today or tomorrow, Earth's tomorrow. Uh, this is the time when the chest equipment's thermal mapping of the surface of the moon uh, which will be on both sides, on the on towards the equator side or and the, towards the polar side as well. This will tell us how the temperature mapping, temperature uh, 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 ranges are there in varying uh, areas, varying zones of the lunar surface. That is one very important thing will be coming in uh, another today or tomorrow or day after because this is the time of the maximum heat having been absorbed out of the sun's light there on that place. So this is one thing that we can expect tomorrow or day after tomorrow, the chased equipment to give us a thermal mapping towards both sides, towards looking towards the polar side and looking towards the, the uh, equator side as well. And of course, uh, across the horizon, it will be giving us. So that is one uh, experiment by the lander will be coming there. Lander also has got the Langmuir probe. That Langmuir probe will continue getting the trace gases, uh, random movement in and around the surface. That data also will come. And there also we are expecting the water vapor uh, to be picked up by this because today, tomorrow, day after tomorrow is the hottest uh, time of the lunar surface in that zone. And in that zone, we also understand Chandrayaan 1 had found out there was a water. So if there was a water at such temperature, some amount of evaporation will, evaporation will happen. And we can also, that Langville probe can also pick up some of those traces of the uh, water vapor. Besides, you know, the bombardment by the solar flare continues there. So there could be some pickup of the elements electrons, protons, a uh, few other neutron uh, objects, all these will continue. Yes. Galactic radiations, cosmic radiations, that continues bombarding that uh, entire lunar surface because there is no atmosphere. Absolutely. So, welcome the data here and we expect more to come in the coming days. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.